All right, everyone. My clock says uh, 2.15. So let's do this. This is the Drupal site tune-up talk, and hopefully you're in your right place. Or if not, there's the door. Um, before we start, this is not a performance tuning talk. Okay, I am doing vroom vroom, but so if you're looking for varnish and caching and all that stuff, you're in the wrong place. There are other sessions, so there's the door if you need to go. My name is Kristen, and I've been I've been doing Drupal for ten years. Uh, it was my ten year anniversary this year, so pretty exciting. And um, I work um, at Hook 42. We're a small shop in the Bay Area of California. Woohoo! Woo All right, go team. Um, so before we start, I wanted to get a quick uh, pulse on who you guys are. So, how many of you would consider yourself a newbie? Ah, nice. All right. So I had labeled this as intermediate because, you know, we're going to talk about some things that maybe some of the newbies don't know anything about. But welcome. I'm very happy to have some newbies in the house. And who considers themselves a veteran? You've been doing Drupal for a long time. Okay, you guys can leave. The door's right there. No, joking. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm a veteran, but I learned some things while I was, uh, you know, doing some tune-up recently that, you know, uh, I didn't know about. So welcome as well. Who considers themselves more of a site builder? Okay, fair number. Uh, how about a femur? A few of you, all right. Uh, project manager. Oh, actually more project managers than themers for some reason. And what about the ones that do everything? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, awesome. So yeah, that was me for a long time. I did everything, and that was a lot of fun. I am so happy that I have femurs to work with and other things now. So I tend to focus on big architecture and back-end coding stuff now. OK, so first we're going to talk a little bit about just the strategy and some things to think about. And before I do. Just so you know, we're in the kind of food coma slot here. We've had lunch, and everybody's a little sleepy. So if you stay awake and you can read, then there'll be some slides for you for your entertainment. So just so you know. OK, so why, why this tune-up thing? I'm not talking about performance. So what, what am I talking about? Why am I talking about tune-up? So some of the things that might happen if you do some clean up on your site. Um, maybe you'll get have less errors on your site. Maybe there's some module that you don't really need, and it's got errors, and you're filling up your logs, and you just don't need it, and you can just get rid of it. Uh, you might improve import performance. So maybe you have um, a content type and a bunch of nodes, but you don't really use that stuff anymore. Maybe you could get rid of it, and then you have less content in your, your site, and overall, you get a, a benefit from that. Um, but in general, the main things are just easier maintenance, uh, easier to get people on board because you have less things going on, less moving parts, and just better experience overall, uh, especially for the developer experience, but maybe also for editors or end users so they're not just seeing a bunch of stuff that you don't need. So that's kind of why. Um, the types of things that you're going to want to think about when you're cleaning up things on your site uh, you know, Drupal is big, there's a lot of stuff going on, so some of the things that you're going to think about cleaning up, and you don't have to do all these at once, and you're not going to want to do all of these things at once, but, you know, your content types of things, uh, the content types themselves, the code, the modules, and views, and we'll talk about a bit of each one of these. So, you know, make a plan. Uh, you need to decide what are your priorities, you know, after you look at kind of what the different things are, what your options are, you know, maybe you're going to tackle uh, getting rid of some content types you don't you know, need anymore. Maybe you're going to focus on users. You're going to kind of have to see what, what, where you want to spend your time. Uh, a lot of this stuff, you need to just be very methodical. A lot of it's kind of tedious, kind of boring. Just put your OCD hat and just, you know, slow and steady. 
And of course, we're still adding features and doing you know, module updates, and we're doing the things that we have to do day to day. So it's kind of tricky sometimes to do some cleanup while you're still doing what you're normally doing. So you're going to have to balance that out. And I recommend very, very small measured changes so that you're, because you can really go, you can really kind of dig your grave if you're not careful here. Document what you're doing. Um, so as far as making it happen, track it with something, you know, whatever your, the tool of choice. If you're using something like Jira, using a spreadsheet, a Word doc, it doesn't really matter. Just uh, make sure you're keeping track of what you're doing. Um, if you're using the features module, then you need to be a little, which most people probably are, you need to be that much more careful about things because the way that um, you end up storing configuration in there, you need to make sure that things get extracted in a, in a way that is sane with your development process. Ah, lots of testing, and more testing, and even more testing. So something I really recommend, if you can swing it, some of you, actually there were all, almost all of you do everything, so this is kind of hard. But if you can, if you have someone that, that knows what you're working on and can do some peer review, it's really good because you're, you know, it's, it's good to have that sanity check because we're going to be doing a lot of, of, of cleanup and sometimes you accidentally do things that you don't mean to when you're doing that. So, um, you know, just the same development process. Uh, you know, if, you're, if possible, you know, you're doing your stuff locally, you're testing it there before you push it up to dev and hopefully other eyes are on it when it's there and going through the, the full development cycle. And the main thing here is we're talking about a lot of deleting. So that's, you just need to be really, really careful because, you know, it's hard to recover from deleting, you know. So just think about that. All right. So the first uh, tune-up area we're going to talk about are cleaning up uh, users. All right. Everyone has a sec to read that. So why might you get cruft with your users? What's that all about? Well, those lovely spam bots. There's lots of code out there, and it wants to spam your site. And they know you're a Drupal site, and they know to go to user slash register, and they know to fill it in and press return and create all these crazy accounts. So that's one Thing. You actually have actual paid people, they're paid really, 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 really small amounts of money, pennies usually, to create accounts. So they're actually real people out in the world that do that. Um, and then, you know, maybe you've just got people looking around, maybe it's competitors or just people just messing around, doing nothing. Or maybe it's you, maybe you went and you made a test account and you did some stuff and then you forgot and whatever and you're testing every release and then all of a sudden you've got like you know 50 test accounts and you forgot all about them. So what, some of the ways to identify user cruft on your site. Um, and not all of these apply to everyone, but in, for some sites there might be certain countries you just don't care about. Like they shouldn't, you, you know, those people from wherever, from Germany, no, like they shouldn't be on our site and we don't want them and now there's, their accounts are just horrible, you know, those Germans. So, um, so, you know, that might make sense for you. Sorry if there's any Germans in the house. Um, I love Germany, go Germany. Um, so, you know, again, that might make sense, it might not, maybe you're just, you're a U.S. company or you're, maybe you're just a German company and it doesn't make sense to have these accounts from other places and you just like, you just don't even want them. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing is you can always check the last access time. So you could see, oh, this user hasn't been on the site for two years or whatever, right? Um, or never actually logged into the site. So there, there's that information. Uh, something that uh, we use a lot, uh, we require that the user actually go and click on their email link to you know, validate their account. Well, if, they nev if the email bounced, that's a very easy way to say, oh, this, this account is probably not any good. Now, sometimes people mistype the email address, so you have to take that into account. Um, another thing that we use a lot is uh, we use roles to really get a sense of, you know, did they activate? So when, in, in our case, if someone activates uh, their account, they actually get a different role. And then we know, okay, if there's this kind of no man's role, uh, then, you know, that account's not really valid. 
And then the test emails use a lot of stuff. I have a Kristen.org account or domain that I use for test emails. And sometimes it's just obvious. You look at it and it's obvious spam. And the thing with all of these is you're going to want to um, block any users that you want to eventually delete. So you're going to go in and say, eh, yeah, that one's no good, that one's no good. So that's a nice thing in Drupal is there's this block. It's really easy. You just go in and you could say, I'm going to block this user. Now how do you, so then, okay, now so you've identified a bunch of users that you don't like. Now what do you do to remove them? So there's some, you know, there's always a module for that. There's lots of modules, too many modules. So um, here are some that you could go and you can install and use them. You know, like administration views is nice. It's pretty much like if you go to admin content, but it, you know, lets you have a little more control over searching and things like that. Um, and then you can just grab all of the blocked ones and delete in one go, and, and you're happy. So, so here are some options for deleting uh, these kind of crufty users. Or, you know, it might make sense that you need a little more logic. You need to make sure that you know what's going on. So, you know, you can have your own custom solution with, you know, PHP code and crons and, or rules and that sort of thing. So one thing to keep in mind when you're deleting users is um, they might have made a content at some point. So maybe you're deleting users that uh, they were actually active on the site at some, time, at some point in the past, but you decide, no, anyone older than two years old, they haven't been on the site. I'm just going to get rid of them. I don't care anymore. Uh, there might be content associated with them. So, you know, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to delete it? Are you going to, you know, put it as anonymous? Are you going to unpublish it? What are you going to do? So you have to think about those kind of things. So, so it's fine that you've gone in and you've looked at stuff and you're, you know, identified bad users and you've, you know, you've removed a bunch. But what are some ways to not get them in the site in the first place? Because obviously, great, I can do cleanup, but, you know, preventative maintenance is always a good thing, right? So um, some options are not letting them actually even get to your website in the first place. That is one option. And ways of doing that, IP blocking, you know, it's sometimes helpful, especially if you're getting attacked right away, unless they're switching their IPs really fast. But um, that is, you know, that is a kind of quick and dirty option to uh, be able to prevent people to get to your site. Cloudflare is a third-party service that um, we've used on some sites where it checks the user and tries to see if it's a spam bot. So it has some, it's basically like a web application firewall, and that's kind of interesting. There's a free, free option if you want to try it out. Um, and then the bad behavior modules also tries to see if maybe this is a, some sort of bot coming in. Then there's the, the typical, and I think probably, you know, 99% of you have used some sort of CAPTCHA, BOTCHA, something, right? Uh, so you can use one or more of these things. Um, you know, I've used Mollum in the past, BOTCHA, Honeypot. You know, there's just like a gazillion options there. You know, feel free to put more than one. You're getting more spam. Try, you know, have three. See if you can, you know, prevent them from coming in. So, so that's a good way to go. Some people like to have the CAPTCHA on the forum. Some people don't, so your options there. The botch and the honeypot don't have the actual physical capture there. So another option, which is kind of interesting and only works for some sites, but I've done this, is you actually hide the user registration page because the spam bots know it's slash user slash register. So if you hide it because you, you want to have full control over who goes to that, then um, you give it a different name and then... Um, you know, only those in the know will be able to go to that and use the new page that has that URL. That requires a little bit of coding, so, you know, um, it's not, it's just a few lines, it's not a big deal, but um, just that is an option. It doesn't work if you're just a site that you want them to go click on the user register and, and that, because then they'll, then the bots can find what that link is. And another thing that I've, I've used a fair amount is this idea of role promotion. So, uh, if someone, does, you know, they, they register but they don't click the link, they're a certain role. Maybe they're just authenticated user or maybe you have some, some other role that, that that state is in. And then they go and they activate, there's some, you know, then they've been promoted to another role. You might have 
promotions to p depending on all sorts of things. Um, maybe if they you know contribute some content, they get you know promoted to another role, and maybe they, you have kind of permissions based on that. So it really it just depends on your site how you're going to do that. Okay, so that was users and focusing um, a lot on you know on spam pre prevention. And next we'll talk more about content. Give you that one. See you guys chill awake. All right. Okay. So, um, so something. So we had spammy users, right? So, well, we can have spammy content too, right? Um, and the idea is pretty much the same with users on the kinds of things that you can do in order to deal with them. Uh, you know, you can prevent them from coming to the site. You might have a, a form that's not a user form, but, you know, some sort of content form on your site, and you're exposing that, and you, you want to be able to, uh, you know, try to prevent people from coming that or have the captures and things. So all those things that we talked about with users still applies here. But um, the one interesting difference is there's no block on content. Um, there's an unpublished, but actually that might not be, that's not a great way to tag something is that you're going to want to delete it at some point. Right, so not you know you could unpublish it, but that doesn't necessarily mean I want to delete this. So you need another way of tagging content that says this is targeted for deletion at some point because it's spam or whatever. You could have you can do it as a, you know use taxonomy or a flag or however you'd like to do that in order to mark these uh, for deletion. But something interesting with content um, getting cruft in your content is actually duplicate content. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, again, you might have spammers that are Nike, 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 buy Nike, you know, again and again and again. You might get something like that. One that is really interesting, which I'm surprised is not actually fixed uh, in core because I've run into it many times, is people double click on things, right? So you have a node add form. Double click, double click. Oh, it's slow. Why is it, you know, and, or triple click, you know, like you just like sit there, click, 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 and you're like, ah. And so, you know, I had this one project, and one of the admins was like, I got five reviews, but they're all exactly the same. I don't understand. And I looked, and the timestamps were like, bleh, bleh, all right in a row. And obviously, either their browser went wacky, or they were really anxious to get this review in that, you know, you know, you had that. So that's kind of an interesting one that you would think was kind of, would, you wouldn't happen out of and just you know out of the box, but it does. You know, you got you know people are managing their content in Word. Yeah, so um, we we fixed. Well, I'll go to the next slide, but uh, we fixed it with some jQuery. Just it's a little snippet, and it's actually you could just Google it. It's like you know. Submit button, multiple you know, prevent multiple clicks, jQuery, and boom, you, you know, you're going to have some code that you can suck in. Um, uh, we use sometimes the node clone module because it's handy, and you know, sometimes the editors kind of have, they want some of the same, maybe tagging or things like that, and they can clone. They might get a little crazy there sometimes. Um, another interesting one is um, you might, they might just uh, insert the, you know, upload the same module or file again and again and again. They might be using that, um, particularly for maybe sending message to people or something and saying, oh, go look at this file and you might end up with a bunch of, of the same files. And these are all things that I've encountered. So, okay. Um, how do you identify these things? If it's public, published content, then um, Google Webmaster Tools has a way of identifying these because this is actually, for SEO, you don't want to have duplicate content, so it's kind of an SEO thing. But you could actually use this um, also for this particular purpose of using the, you check for the duplicate title tags. But most of this content, if, you know, it's probably not published, you know, posting a bunch of stuff and you haven't looked at it and, you know, it's duplicate or maybe it's the admins accidentally did it, that kind of thing. So you can actually use the unique, uniqueness module in order to be able to check for duplicates. Uh, there's also an audit files module, I believe, you have to actually look in the issue queue. I think there's a patch for Drupal 7, but there is some way of using that to look for duplicate files. And, you know, if you're, if you're a coder, you could go and just 
do some queries. Now, so the thing here is, like I said, you're going to have to be able to, just like with spam, you'd have to identify that these are uh, things that you want to delete at some point. So you're going to have to tag them or flag them or something, some way of identifying that this is cruff that needs to go away. So as far as removing them, uh, so views, bulk operations, great module. You can just make a little view that you know, you're, you're going to grab all nodes with tag, you know, crufty or whatever, and then say, eh, delete, okay, all, all good, bye-bye. Uh, you can, you know, use rules for that or use some custom code. Uh, something that we're working on now is we have this one huge website that's got literally like 100 gigs of files or something insane, and um, a lot of them are, are duplicates because it's a bunch of... Uh, people messaging each other, and it's like agents messaging travelers, and it, they're always like, oh, look at this beautiful picture from Hawaii. Look at this beautiful picture from Hawaii. Look at this. all these different people, and you're like, oh, stop. Because then we have you know, the same thing like 500 times. So we're actually working on this right now is uh, to have some code that's smart and says, oh, this is exactly the same file. We're just going to point them all over and start using the media module for that. Um, so how do you, okay, so, you know, there's ways of, of identifying and cleaning it up, but then how about not getting these in the first place? So, you know, think about who you want to access this, these forms in the first place. You know, prevention is great, right? So if, if you don't, really don't want, you know, anonymous to hit these forms, then don't let them hit the form, and then you're going to get less stuff, right? So be just very mindful about restricting access to your stuff. And then we talked a little bit about um, using the jQuery to prevent that multiple button click. And, and there probably is a module for that, but we just grabbed some jQuery and pasted it in. It was good. Uh, then there are actually two modules. There's the uniqueness one, but there's also one called unique field, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it, can, it can be handy where you say that I want all titles for my content type um, article to be unique, which as a good rule to have. Uh, you don't want to be having the same blog posts with you know, the same title across your site, whatever. So that one you can do. Individual fields have to be unique per content type or globally, or some combination of fields have to be unique. And probably a lot of you have heard of and or probably have all used the media module. So that one's useful for trying to reuse these files. So you're not going and uploading that file the 500th time. You're going and saying, oh, it's in my library. Here it is, and I'm going to use that one. And then as far as uh, trying to get less craft in your site, you know, if you have some sort of moderation process, uh, workbench moderation is great, but some way that's like there's some sanity check before things are published to say, oh, okay, is this really stuff that we want to get out on the site? Okay, so we talked about users. We talked about content. Now we'll talk a bit about content types. I don't see any snoring yet. All right. Okay, so why content type cruft? Things change, right? You know, all the time. All the time. Everyone's learned Drupal 8, Drupal 8 now, and Tomorrow we'll be learning Drupal 9, and it's all good. So, yeah, things change all the time. Uh, you, you know, just stuff might not be needed anymore. Maybe a field isn't needed. Maybe the content type's fine, but you don't want to use that field anymore. Or you, maybe you've replaced it. Maybe you had some custom content types, but then you're like, oh, I can totally use, you know, a private message module to do my messaging. I don't need to use my content type to do that. I can, it's all baked in. I can use that instead. Um, and then something that we've been looking at is, you know, doing a lot of performance profiling and saying, okay, you know, what are the things that are slow? Can we, you know, consolidate? Can we clean up? And so you might be doing some performance uh, evaluation and find that you know, maybe a particular field um, is taking a lot of space in your database, for example. Okay, so as far as identifying these things, uh, one really simple way is there's a fields page um, under admin reports fields, and you can go and see maybe that field um, you know isn't even uh, you know needed anymore. You can go do an evaluation there. Um, a lot of this one really is just about thinking, right? 
talking and thinking. You have to look at each thing and say, do I really need this? Do I really need this? Do you really, you know, really, really, like now I'm getting really, we have this one site and we keep trying to do, get it faster and faster and faster and then the client's like, oh, I want to add blah, 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 blah. I'm like, do you really need it? You know, like would they use it? You know, like really like three times, you know, well, no, actually, I guess we could not. And, and like, yes, that's the answer I wanted to hear, right? I mean, sure, I get money if they, we build stuff, but I'd love to just, you know, try not to make the thing break. So um, so the other thing is, you know, you're here, you're obviously keeping up to date with the technology, and there's always new modules and things. And, you know, maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe it's more efficient. You can get rid of some of the stuff that you've built custom. All right, so removing a content type. This is very, very surgical, um, particularly if you're using features. So, obviously, any nodes that were of that content type, you need to get rid of them. Um, there are ways of converting the node type. If you want to preserve that content, uh, and there's a sane mapping to another content type, there are ways of doing that. But generally, you'd probably just like, oh, I don't need this con content anymore. I'm going to get rid of it. Then... You know, if you have custom code, then you need to make sure that you go and look at all that code and make sure you're not actually referring to that content type or any nodes of that type. Then there's all these things that could be referring to it, right? It might be in all these things, views, context, rules, so forth. So, you know, you just need to do an inventory, see is it there or not, and if so, remove them. And then, at that point, once it's removed from all the other stuff, then you can say, okay, I'm going to re remove this from my features. I've included it in this particular feature, so I'm going to remove it from there. And once all that's done, then you can do, um, if you can do some code, you can add a hook update in into a custom module in order to delete it that way. That's kind of the preferred um, sane way to do it, because that way when you're pushing it from environment to environment, running update.php, it's going to delete it for you. Um, or if, you know, you just can't code or that's not an option, then you could just go to the UI and remove it that way. So that's how you would remove a content type. Removing a field is very, very similar. Uh, so, you know, get, make sure that none of the code is refer referencing it. Make sure that none of these other Drupal modules are referencing it. And then remove it from features. Uh, so features are a little int interesting with fields because in features 2.0, they introduced this idea of a base and an instance. So they split it up, the, the, the configuration. And so uh, you just have to make sure that you know, you're, you're removing it, both the instance, um, all instances and also the, the field base from features. And then, again, you're going to do either the hook update in if you can do a little bit of code. And if not, then uh, you actually, in this case, have a drush option. And also, you can delete it from the UI. So again, you know, it's not rocket science, but you just need to be very methodical, very surgical, lots of backups, very careful. So how do you reduce this kind of cruft in the first place? This is a lot of just careful planning, thinking, thoughtfulness, you know. So uh, not a lot of technology, just a lot of brain power. So, you know, documenting. Um, Palantir actually has a really awesome spreadsheet for content type definitions uh, where you can just put things in different tabs and, you know, build out your fields and everything and have it all nicely documented. You can use that spreadsheet or you can use a, a Word doc or whatever and uh, just, you know, think it through first. You know, and then reuse when it makes sense. You know, if you don't need 50 content types, don't, you know, you, you know, if you can consolidate, then great, because, you know, you're going to have to maintain this stuff, right? So if you can get, you go from 50 to, to 25, then boom. You know, I mean, that, that helps the database. It helps your life, right, to keep things simpler. All right. So now we will talk a bit about cleaning up your views. People are still awake. I hate snakes, just so you know. It took a lot for me to put that in there. I really, really, really hate snakes. So you guys are really 
important to me for me to put that in there. <laughs> All right. Okay. So for views, we kind of craft, um, you know, it's kind of the same idea as the others. You know, you might have changed things. You don't need any more. You replaced it. Maybe you had a custom view, but you decided to use some other module to do it, and, you know, it has views already made for you or whatever. So, um, or you might have made a view, and it was dog slow. And this is something that I ran into. I was like, oh, yeah, we'll use private message. It's great. Oh, there's a patch for doing views integration. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I try to use views when I can because, you know, I like to try to be, you know, have make things in a way that other people that are non-coders can also interact with. So, you know, did views. Awesome. Then we stick the 400,000, you know, entity messages in there, and it's like, oh, no, that wasn't good. Okay, so, you, like, you go to the view, and you're like, yeah, come on. So we ended up rewriting it and doing it from, from straight code and had to be really particular about our queries. So, you know, there are very valid reasons why you might not want to use views. Okay, so identifying them. Uh, there's an awesome module, views usage audit module. Um, that one's interesting because you need to run it on your live site. Okay. Normally, you know, if you're auditing things, you know, you try not to do that on your live site, but you do have to run it on your live site because it has to see if the view is used, and the only way it can see that is by people hitting your site and going to all your pages. And if it's on your test site, people aren't hitting all the pages, right? So it makes sense. So you just, you know, enable it, let it run for a week or two or however makes sense, however long makes sense for your site, and then you can turn it off and, and look at, you know, at which ones that you need to uh, get rid of. So, yeah, just perform it. We use New Relic a lot, um, like them a lot. So just seeing, you know, which, which of these views are slow. Uh, you know, do we have to replace them with code? Or we've done a lot of tweaks just in views, just making sure that, you know, things are you know, cached and that kind of thing. You know, just manually looking around. Um, and again, this is one where you can just, do we really need this? Do I need this page? Can I get rid of it? I don't think anybody's using it. And just making, doing a sanity check. So removing them. So removing views is similar to removing other things. Uh, remove the references. Remove it. You can have views, reference views, right? It's always fun. Viewception. I think there was actually a session, right, today about viewception. Um, and then, then remove it from your features modules. And then again, you've got your option of doing the hook update n or um, removing it from the uh, UI. So not all of these op uh, all of these have Drush options of, of deleting. Okay, so let's not get these crafty views in there in the first place um, when possible. So again, a lot of this is thinking, right? Lots of thinking. Uh, something that I am a strong proponent of, and anyone that does a lot of views is a strong proponent, use good machine names. If you're going to go and try to delete things, and it's everything's called block underscore one, page underscore one, you're just like, I don't know which one it is. It's just irritating, right? So um, unfortunately, it's always, you know, it's collapsed by default. You can change that, but by default, and it's in the advanced tab, and it's, and it's like, really, it should be up front and center. But always use a really good, whatever naming convention you want, doesn't really matter. Just use some consi consistent, sane naming convention. Uh, we like to use view modes to try to reuse things. We find that pretty handy. And, you know, reuse. Okay, so that was views. And now we're going to talk a bit about tuning up code and modules. Let's see who's still awake. Some people are just still checking their email. All right. Yeah, that much cuter than the snake, huh? All right. Oh, he would, the snake would eat that one. Oh, no. That's sad. Okay. Uh, okay. So why would you get cruft in your code and modules? Um, number one, this number one reason <laughs> modules were not in, well, maybe number two. It, yeah, yeah, too many modules out there, right, to use. But um, not, un, not uninstalled properly. So this is, you know, even those of us with the best intentions, it just happens, right? So that's, you'll get cruft that way. 
you know, things change. I don't need it anymore. Or, you know, you're doing custom code instead of a contrib module, that kind of thing, replaced it. Um, and you might identify code that you need to get rid of because things are slow. Now, so this one is actually, uh, you might have patched the module. So there was a, oh, we needed fuse integration, and there's the patch, and apply the patch, and then you want to upgrade the module, and then, oh, now it has that patch in there. So I don't need the patch anymore, and you still have that patch lying around. You don't need it, and just kind of file craft. And uh, the code has been hacked. So sad. Uh, I started in Drupal 4, and I hacked core. Sorry. It was back in 2004. I didn't know any better. So um, probably, you know, if you've been around long enough, you probably made that mistake. But um, And then sometimes, you know, you have to make changes. And, but then you make them as patches. Then you're not hacking. <laughs> you're, you're patching. So that's okay. That is allowed. So you're going to identify the stuff. All right, so there's a page for that, of course. So there's an uninstall page. Those are all the modules that are on your site that have not been uninstalled properly. You, know, you haven't pressed the uninstall button. So there's that page. There's an awesome site audit module. Um, John Peck is at the conference. In fact, he might even be in the room. Mm, or he's lurking. So um, awesome. He's got an awesome beard. So uh, if you see that man, shake his hand. Um, got that module you can use. There's a variable cleanup module, which is handy. And the hack module um, is really good. To, is, this is an awesome module if you are inheriting a site, right? Someone's like, oh, I lost my developer. I need you. And you're like, okay. And then you get some site, and you're like, I have no idea what these other people did. Install that module. And then you'll know if they've hacked core, they hacked contrib, whatever, and it's really good. So that was, uh, yeah, we used that on a big project. We did a big D5 to D7 migration, and uh, we installed that and found that about 80% of the code had been hacked. <laughs> We're like, okay, yeah. That's fun. All right. Um, and then just, you know, keeping, keeping up with the issue queues and, you know, seeing if uh, patches have been, you know, if there are patches that you can use, checking performance. And then just, you know, using your head. Okay. So removing a module, you need to make sure that you're not referring to that module elsewhere in the code. And you include files or things like that. Remove it from features as all the dependencies and things. <laughs> Lots of backups. In fact, there should be all those other ones where I said to delete stuff. Back everything up first. Um, and then you have that hook update in option that you can do. Do it that way or just through the UI or through Drush. Then, okay, so the, the big picture, the big thing to take away here is you need to make sure that the module is uninstalled before the code is gone, because you can't <laughs> install it otherwise. Um, so a typical thing that will happen is people will, um, they'll, they're like, oh, I don't use that module anymore. It was enabled at one point. Oh, I don't use that module. They'll, to remove it from Git, and then push it out, whatever, and then they didn't realize, oh, it was enabled, and there was stuff, right? There was a database table with it, or there were variables in the in the variables table, and it was never uninstalled properly. But once you remove the code, it's not going to show up on that list of modules anymore of things to uninstall. So it's just, you got to remember, always do the uninstall before you delete the code. So that's the big takeaway here. And then just do your normal dev cycle. Ah, so, and then for patches. So inevitably, any Drupal site of any size has some number of patches. Um, sometimes a, a lot of patches, especially if you're doing multilingual. <laughs> Drupal 7, you know, a lot of patches. Um, okay, so with patches, you know, you go to the issue queue. Oh, they, they say they committed it. Did it make it into the latest release? You go check the dates. Oh, yeah, it's, it's there. Great, awesome. So then you're just going to update the module like you would normally. Then, you know, I always usually try to do a sending check. Did it really get in there? Um, Run your update PHP, lots of testing. And then I 
like to, and I recommend this for everybody if you're not doing it already, is I have a patches directory. In that patches directory, I have a readme file. And I, a lot of people will just have the readme file and they'll just uh, have the list in there of all their patches. I, I don't know why, but I like to have the, the physical file, the patch file. I get, get that from Drupal.org, I don't know, something OCD. I have that file, I have it in the readme file, and it points off to the issue queue and it says why we applied the patch, the date we applied the patch, who applied the patch, blah, 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 all this stuff in there. And I find that's a it's very sane way of, of dealing with patches. And then you do your normal diff cycle. All right. So reducing cruft. Um, so, you know, a lot of this is just thinking, you know, reusing, thinking carefully. Um, you know, we've got the whole open buffet syndrome, right? There's so many modules. And you just want that one thing. And you're like, but there's a module for that. Oh, okay, there's another, and there's another. And, you know, it is so easy to get above 100 modules, above 150 modules. I mean, at some point, if you've got a complex enough site, there's some, I mean, if you use a distribution, oh, forget about it. You're like, you're over 200 modules, right? It's just, it's kind of out of control. So just be mindful, you know, just like you would ask the client, do you really need that? You need to ask yourself, do you really need that? And, you know, if you can get away with not doing it, don't do it. Um, but, you know, if you have to, go for it. Yeah, so using, so, you know, it might be something that's just, the, you have a full module, and really it's doing, like, it's doing that button click, you know, preventing that button click. And you're like, I could just so stick that in my own thing that I already have a module, a custom module that's doing some other stuff. I'm going to just throw it in there, and then you have one less module, right, and it's just a bit of code. So, you know, don't feel like you, you know, obviously you need to be feel comfortable enough to do some co copy-paste and stuff, but um, just think about it. And then I already talked about keeping that patches directory. And always uninstall that module before deleting the code. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the takeaways here. Some people are still eh, quite a people are still awake. All right, good. Okay, so number one, cruft happens. Don't feel bad. I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes, right? And you know, we're working hard. We're going fast. We're working on too many projects. We have kids. We have friends. Whatever, you know. So don't feel like, oh, I totally, ah, you know, just just get over it. You know, it, it happens. So. I'm not going to read all these, but you know, the hindsight is 2020. So just you're fine. So you need, you know, try to plan. You know, try to take the step back and say, okay, I know this stuff's going to happen, but let's try to minimize it, and we're going to try to plan as best we can. So you know, the great one: measure twice, cut once. So for Drupal. You know, plan, you know, just like document, you know, think about it, think about, do I really need this? Do I really need this? You know, think about, document it, read it, throw it by someone else as a sanity check. You know, just really, you know, try not to get it in there in the first place if you can, right? Um, so, yeah, actually, that's a little more on the simplified. But, you know, so, you know, if you don't need it, don't use it. Um, really, you know, try to... I had, had this one contractor on a project, and he's like, oh, no, you want to add another module. And at first I was like, well, yeah, but, you know, this one's good. And he's like, but you've got so many modules. I'm like, yeah. And towards the end of the project, as we, you know, the site got more and more complex, I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Okay. All right. And so I was the one that was like, oh, no, no, no. You, you want to add something? No way. We're not going to add anything else. So, uh, you know, there's, but there's a balance, right? You know, still have to have functionality. All right, and be careful, right? So, again, you're delete. This is all about getting rid of stuff. So, you're deleting. Be very careful. Okay, but you need to do it, right? There's a bunch of stuff in there, and well, I mean, maybe you don't. You know, you have to decide. You decide, but you probably should do it. So, get. 
get started and uh, why not yesterday, right? Why not today? All right. So with that, we went through our site tune-up. And we went for, I don't know if you noticed the clunker that we had before, but we did pretty good, huh? Awesome. What do you think that'll go vroom vroom? I think so. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty sweet. I don't even know what kind of car that is. Looks good. Okay. So at this point, I will turn it over to questions, and they would like you to use the mic, if you don't mind. Stretch your legs. I just had a quick question about keeping up on modules. You mentioned that early on about, you know, making sure you're staying on top of best practices and the best modules. And, yeah. you know, we build some sites, not a ton. Uh, and that's always a continual challenge, trying to find the best modules. So I wonder if you had any suggestions on maybe better searching tools or sites that you use, if there's any aggregators that are kind yeah. of these or the... No, it's tough. It's tough. Um, obviously, there's the standard places, Drupal Planet, to keep up on things. Um, you know, there are podcasts that, you know, keep up on, like, uh, modules unraveled. Or, you know, there are definitely, there's certain blogs that are they're good at, you know, keeping up with that kind of stuff. But there's so many. And there's a lot of duplicates. And there's a lot of you know, not-so-great ones, right? So it's hard. Um, there are some good distributions you can look at to see what, um, actually, Demo frame it, Framework um, is a distribution that is fairly new. That's kind of a fun one to see what Drupal can do. That's a, it's from Acquia. It came out recently, and um, they're working on it for Drupal 8 as well. Um, it's kind of heavy and bloated, but it has a lot of modules. So it's actually kind of a fun one because you can go in and, and see, like, oh, how'd they use that? How'd they use that? And it has some best practices and things. So they're, yeah, I would go and you look at, you know, module usage, um, you know, look at, uh, well, you'll probably see some of them at the, at the camps and the cons and stuff of, you know, what are the main ones people, I mean, there's obvious ones, you know, views, everyone uses views, everybody uses features, or, you know, whatever. But, you know, then you've got that next layer of like, eh, I don't know, do I really want to use whatever? Like, yeah, so it, it's, it's tough. It's not a, even, you know, and so what I'll do is I'll decide if I want to try it and then I'll test it in a little, you know, test the sandbox area, try it out, um, look at the issue queue, Check the usage, check the code. You know, I, I can look at the code. I don't know if you can, but, you know, just try to get a sense of, you know, is, it, is this safe to use? And sometimes you just have to try it. Sure. So you mentioned some instances where requirements change or you, you change how you're doing things. And if you're somebody who learns while doing, you know, you might uh, make a change to where you store things. Like, for example, files. Like when you attach a file to something, you might have not realized that you left it default and then later, you know, after the site's been live for a while, go change where those files are, put them in a specific directory. I mean, not me, I'm asking for a friend. Yeah, sure, uh, yeah. been there, it, done so that. Let's, so let's say I wanted to help my friend and <laughs> uni unify those files into one place. Is there a better way to do it than going through and having to manually move the files um, that are not in the right place and then reassociate that link? Yeah, I, I believe the um, source, what's it called, the file source, the module, where you can do the uh, file source path. Anyway, the one where you can specify the directory um, with, like, tokens and things. File, file field path, I okay. think. We'll make sure. But um, I'm pretty sure with that one, if you change the, the directory name, doesn't it just automatically move them over for you, the other ones? Or no? They're, 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 this keeps, oh, you did it manually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so we're doing a lot of, man yeah, it's, it's code and it's moving things and it's, so I don't have a great answer for that. I, okay. I, I think that we need a module for that, right? So actually I, I was thinking for the, because we're doing all this file cleanup and this consolidation, we, we kind of need a file consolidation module. Okay. And I don't Thanks. know if, I'll, if we'll write that, but <laughs> maybe. Uh, similar question, um, we, we have a lot of, Basically, nodes keep getting deleted and a lot of just leftover files and duplicates of files. Uh, we were wondering if you had any um, strategies for you know, cleaning up a huge file directory that just has a bunch of unused files. Yeah, so yeah, I feel your pain. That's exactly what we're going through right now. Um, so there's the file audit module to help identify some of that stuff um, or audit 
audit files. Um, we, what we're doing is we're actually, we had did some queries and stuff and we built our own database table and we're gonna write some code that does some of the consolidation. Yeah, so actually, yeah, since it, since you're not on mic, so I'll just reiterate. So, um, yeah, so the thing about files is someone might upload the same file but call it something different. Well, actually, it's going to, even if they don't, it's going to be underscore one, two, three, right, when you upload the same file again and again and again. Um, so, yeah, you can do an MD5 checksum to make sure, is this file really the same file? Um, the tricky bit, though, if you're using um, media or, you know, your, the, the file entity module, you're able to associate metadata with the files. So you need to be careful because actually we're, we have some instances where we're actually using the file metadata, uh, the alt and title, in a way that exposes some content on the page. So even though the file is actually the same for two different nodes, uh, we have different metadata uh, or the, you know, they're equivalent files. It's not the same exact file, but, um, you know, they're equivalent files. We have different metadata, so we don't actually want to consolidate those because we have to worry about that metadata. So it's not a, certainly not an easy, and the other one is you might end up with files and then there's no, maybe, you know, there's managed files, right, that has an entry in the database, and there's unmanaged files. Well, if you have managed, man, managed files in your site and, like, are they supposed to be there? Like, sometimes people actually have unmanaged files. So, you know, you, you have to be careful. Like, well, just because it's not referenced from the database is, you know, maybe it's actually supposed to be there. So, I mean, we don't do unmanaged files, but, you know, it depends on, especially if you inherited the site from someone else. And it's like, oh, okay, well, it's not, I don't, mm, right? So you need to do a lot of grepping and things, I guess, and see where it's referenced. Um, apologize because I think you weren't going to cover this, but I was hoping you might talk about um, content type consolidation just briefly. Yeah, I think that was a bullet point at some point, and um, yeah, that one that one's kind of tricky. Um, I mean, it goes down to you know content architecture and you know making sense, and it, a lot of it is the way you think, right? In the way your client or whoever the who's going to be using the site thinks, and sometimes I actually I had this uh, one of the Santa Cruz Drupal user group guys. You know, he was showing me a site he did, and he has one content type to rule them all. And I was like, wow, that's pretty amazing. And he was using all of these uh, um, conditional fields. And he just had all sorts of stuff in there, but you just didn't, depending on what you were doing, you were adding stuff, you just didn't, you know, you saw the things that made sense. I was like, well, that's actually pretty kind of awesome, but kind of weird. And I, you know, so, I mean, it really, and it was working great for him, and I know someone who, you know, worked with him who did, started doing that, and it was like, okay, I kind of get it. <clears throat> so it's it's hard because... I don't know, I come from an object-oriented Java background, and for me, you know, I try to have the different objects, but you know, them, you, know you need them similar enough, but not too crazy. So an example might be um, landing pages. Those are, those are tricky because a lot of times with landing pages, you might have them focused, um, you know, on a certain thing, but, you know, see if you can try to find some commonality between them and, you know, Maybe they always have a summary, and they always have the body, and they always have an image. Maybe the image is used in different ways for the different for the different landing pages, but that's okay. The fact that you're just collecting an image, or maybe they can add the image or not, right? Maybe it's an optional thing. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a little tricky. But as far as like if you had already had the separate content types and you're trying to merge them and say, okay, I just want one, that's when you have to do the that requires a little bit of um, care, a, a lot of care, actually. Um, if, if they're, yeah, you probably have to do some custom code in order to do that. Um, if you just happen, if exactly the same fields, though, you can totally do the, change the content. It's not that hard to change the content type of one to another. Um, again, it's, there's a little bit of code, but it's, it's really, it's like a few lines. It's really not that crazy. It sounds a little crazy, but it's not that bad. Um, so, it, it totally depends on the different content types. So I've inherited a side from someone else, and so short of um, 
just opening up the database and looking through, is there a good way to see if there are modules that were not properly uninstalled that do have leftover stuff in there? Yeah, so the, the variable cleanup one, that's a good one because most modules um, have some variables that they've created. And that's usually the, tel that's the telltale sign that um, someone didn't, didn't uh, uninstall it properly. So the thing is, if, they, if the code's not there, but you can see that it's there, um, that it was probably there at one point, you just stick the, the code back, right? And then you, can un then you can uninstall it. You have to know what version. But um, sometimes it's still, it's still in there. So you can look in the systems table, and sometimes the, the information is still kind of around in this kind of zombie state, um, or certainly in the variables table. The variable cleanup module should help um, point at some of that stuff. Um, or, yeah, sometimes you just have to look at the database tables and go, you know, private message, blah, blah, blah. I'm not using private message. Why, why do I have <laughs> tables called private message? That doesn't make any sense. So it's a little bit of uh, investigation sometimes. I am. Oh, no. Okay. But I'm plugged in. I thought. Oh, it unplugged itself. All right. Well, we're, we're I, unless, I think we're good. Right? No more questions? All right, then. Um, oh, wait, you're not going to see my cute little guy. Oh. All right, there's a, there's a cute, oh, hold on. There's a cute puppy. Hold on a sec. You going to go away? Oh, okay, so you're good to go. Um, if you have more questions, answers at Hook42. And then I'd appreciate it. Um, you know, pe speakers, I don't get paid, right? P the speakers here don't get paid. Um, but, you know, if you can just leave a comment. If you hated it, you loved it, it doesn't matter. Just leave a comment, say what, what you liked, you didn't like, whatever. Um, but they use that information to select speakers. So it's very valuable to the Drupal Association. And that's it. And these will be posted, and the recording will probably be up like in an hour or something. I don't know. It's crazy. So thank you very much.